thing that so, I so know about this. So far, we've learned about music for you. You've learned about music via a rap history class that you were forced to take and Tony Hawk's gear. I was eight when all of these <laughs> albums came out. What's going on, as you may or may not be aware, it is 1999 Music Week at The Ringer. So me and my boss <laughs> like friend, <laughs> guy. Today I'm your about, musical uncle. You were, I'm your music, you, yeah, you're my musical uncle. My musical guy today. Walking through Amoeba Music, we're gonna pick out some records from 1999. If I'm your boss, it makes it sound like, I'm like, this is my take. You this is my this take. The White Stripes cassette. This is, uh, this packaging is just like. This is a red cassette version of the 1999 White Stripes debut. Every once in a while with cassettes, you would get a colored one like Raekwon per like famously had the purple tape for only built for Cuban links. Uh -huh. I guess I picked this out for a couple reasons. One is like, kind of like the slow burn way that things used to build up in the late 90s and the early 2000s. Bands would be on these really small labels and then like play tons and tons, 200 shows a year, and like the word of mouth would just grow. And that's how the White Stripes kind of developed up to the point where they had their big breakthrough with, with uh, I guess, White Bloods. Well, Distill and then White Blood Cells. Have you ever actually owned a cassette? Have I owned one? Yeah. Like, like, did you ever no. have a cassette player that you bought records for, like you no, bought albums? No, no, absolutely not. This is stuff that I read about, <laughs> like, <laughs> later on. Get a cassette player and then go buy this. There it goes. There you go. I can have it anywhere. Next up we have Jay-Z, Volume 3, Life and Times. In the late 90s, there was this interesting thing going on where like Jay was kind of considered almost too mainstream by some people. Obviously, history has not written it that way or we don't really like, think about him in that those terms. We just think of him as one of the greatest rappers of all time. Sure. But when this came out, it was uh, somewhat, like I think people approached it with a little bit of trepidation just because of the sounds. It had West Coast sounds, it had Timbaland beats, it had East Coast stuff. And in the end of the day, it wound up being basically like the greatest hits of rap music at the time period, like anywhere. It was just such like a diverse and incredibly like rich record sound wise. Do you like this one? Yeah, I do like this one. What I am thinking about, my like shorthand for volume three is Big Pen Pen. Yeah. The thing that I always remember about it is that Jay-Z rapped 32 bars. Uh -huh. And then Pimp C. And then, and then, and then, and then Pimp, Pimp C just comes in, yeah. refuses to go to the video shoot, like doesn't even like the song, and just washes everybody with eight bars. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Black on Both Sides by Most Def. This album I learned about through a hip hop history class that I took at Southern <laughs> University one summer. <laughs> this is how I got obsessed with Umi Says. Uh -huh. And uh, also like the hip hop record is like one of my favorite songs of all time. Great album cover, like whenever you just do the, the face and then the back of the head, yeah. that was always really cool. This was sort of like a punk rock version of rap in the late 90s. Very cool, very cool. Built to Spill. Keep, Keep it, it like, like a, a secret. secret. My understanding of Built to Spill comes entirely from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. So, so far about we've Built learned about music for you. You've learned about music via a rap history class that you were forced to take and Tony Hawk's gear. I was eight when all of these <laughs> albums came out. Yes! The Matrix soundtrack on vinyl. I don't remember this being on a lot, but obviously this movie was on a lot of people's minds. It wasn't a lot of like, hey man, come on over, let's, let's listen, listen to the Matrix, to the Matrix soundtrack. soundtrack. <laughs> Did you ever have this? I never had the soundtrack, no, but I had at various points- All the, the articles the, of clothing. All the articles of clothing. <laughs> I would like to see Micah in the Trinity outfit. <laughs> D donate to my GoFundMe. <laughs> Micah, this is Jimmy Eat World Clarity. I didn't show up until Bleed American, yeah. obviously, because of the middle and sure. TRL and oh so God. on and so forth. <laughs> it just takes some time, Clarity became kind of like this sensation over the course of a couple of years while it was happening, and people really fell in love with this record hardcore. And then what happened next is they put out Bleed American. 
which was sort of like their breakthrough because that's how you heard them. It's yeah. They had sweetness on it. You know, their music video was in rotation. But it was a really interesting case study of a band that went from basically like getting in the van uh -huh. and being like touring around the West Coast and, and Southwest and even, you know, like making it out to the East Coast and stuff like that with Static Prevails, kind of disappearing for a couple years and not knowing what was going to happen, making what is probably considered their best album, I think, mm -hmm. and is beloved by everybody. But this was just a bridge to what became their big commercial breakthrough, which was Bleed American. Damn, Harry Potter, original motion picture soundtracks. That's that real shit right there. Oh, Enemo the State? Oh yeah, let's do Enemo, let's do that. It's Blink-182 and I think it's probably like something that you liked at the time and that I liked at the time. Uh, yeah, this was a, this was a very big, like, grade school obsession. Everybody was into this. Yeah. Every single person. Even in 99, even as a kid, you must have been like, I'm definitely about to listen to a bunch of idiots make music. Yeah. And that's sort of like the thing about Blink is that you're like, against my better judgment, this is amazing. <laughs> exactly. That is the entire experience of, of listening to like, what's my age again? Because it is a ridiculous song that is perfect nonetheless. Yeah, all the small things too is like, probably one of the best songs of the decade. This is around the same time that like Activision is a giant part of your life. Okay. <laughs> Cause I mean like there's Dave Mira BMX yeah, and like yeah, yeah. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and like all this other shit and Listening like, to this kind of California punk was huge yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Heart palpitations <laughs> just holding this thing. <laughs> 